Good morning. Welcome back to another lesson in botany. Yesterday we were talking about the grass family, including cereals and some of the grains um, come from that grass family. And that is a pretty significant portion of the food that we humans eat. Um, but there are so many, so many, so many different types of flowers, some of which humans use for themselves and some of which just exist in the wild, but all of which help to continue plant life. And some of these flowers are amazingly not related, even though they seem very similar. And some of them seem very dissimilar, but are surprisingly related. Plants have this inner strength to them and they can use that strength they can focus that strength on a number of different things as we've learned through the course of this botany block um, we have discovered that um, some plants can self-pollinate and they can produce with themselves and some plants need um, pollinators they need butterflies and bees and birds and beetles and uh, flies and insects to um, help carry their pollen from one flower to another so that they can reproduce and have more plants. Some reproduce just from their roots, um, and others can be completely regrown from just a little bit of the cut plant break off, and it can regrow into a full-sized plant. Sometimes just the tiniest little seed or nut, like, a, uh, like an acorn, can grow into a mighty oak tree. It's pretty fantastic. A coconut can float across the water and for a thousand miles or more and wash up on the beach and grow a tree somewhere completely new. It's an explorer. So plants have a sense of intelligence. We might not think of plants as book smart and having human intelligence, um, but they certainly can adapt and they certainly um, do a whole lot of things. Um, for instance, I want to tell you about cabbage, because cabbage and the cabbage family can focus its strength on all kinds of different things. Some cabbages focus all their strengths um, into, the, into the roots of the cabbage, um, and those are called turnips. And so, you know, you, it has a little bit of leaves on top, but once you pull those leaves up, the main body of that thing and the part that humans generally eat, um, and you can usually eat all of the parts of the cabbage, but that part that we eat when we pull it up is that turnip, the big bulbous root. Um, sometimes the in the cabbage family, it might focus all of its strength on the stem, and you get this thick stem filled with like nutrition and um, holds up well against predators and bugs and humans grow this crop uh, that's called kohlrabi um, or more commonly the types of cabbages that we know um, can just be a leafy cabbage if it focuses on its leaves as the edible part um, and humans want to cultivate this cabbage and this is all over the world um, this is you know cabbage is something that is in almost every culture in the world um, as long as it's able to grow, because cabbage can grow in really hot weather, really cold weather, depending on where it's focusing that, that power. You know, you have um, Napa cabbage, this um, tall cabbage that grows well in sort of a Mediterranean climate. Um, you have the green leaf and the purple leaf cabbage that historically, before there was refrigeration, people could harvest these cabbages. They could leave them there um, in the ground and then harvest them really late. Um, they could also put them in a, um, in a root cellar, you know, where they kept things fairly cool and it could last them all through the winter um, uh, until they were able to grow things again, until the spring came and they were able to have vegetables again. Um, people have made pickled cabbage. They've made sauerkraut out of cabbage. Um, out of Asia, um, you have kimchi coming from uh, cabbage. Um, so you have all these all these different dishes um, of, of cabbage. If you've ever had corned beef and cabbage, a sort of an a English-Irish dish. Um, 
Now, cabbages can also, in the cabbage family, if they focus that power up, um, up at the tip and they focus it on the flowers, you end up with something like cauliflower. Again, another part of the, um, of the cabbage family. And you don't really think of cauliflower as a flower necessarily. It looks like a, a, a pretty thick and hard um, vegetable for the most part. Um, it's not necessarily the type of flower that you would um, look at and sniff and pick, but it, you know it is actually a flower. Um, you know, and then cabbages can even grow at those nodes, um, those little eyelets where, um, when you look up the stem where it would normally make a branch or a leaf, it can grow this uh, special thing out of it. And that's in Brussels sprouts. You have sort of a thick woody stem to this cabbage plant. If you've ever seen Brussels sprouts growing, um, then you can see that they just grow right out the side um, all around this Brussels sprout stalk. Um, you know, and similarly, in this um, in this daisy family or the um, sunflower family or the aster family, that's all actually all the same family. Um, you have a number of different plants that don't even seem related, but they are. You might, you might look at a tiny little dandelion, you know, um, pretty close to the ground. Um, it's got its sometimes thorny little um, green leaves sticking up, and um, it's got its yellow um, flower. And you might, you might think that that looks nothing like a, a sunflower, but it's actually, it's, it's in the same family. And so you then look at a sunflower, which is enormous and so much taller. And sure, that's golden as well. Um, it doesn't necessarily rub off on you the same way that dandelions do. Dandelions, if you brush up against them, you can actually turn things yellow. I don't know if you've had that experience. We did that when we were kids. We would take dandelions and rub them into our cheeks and on our nose and end up turning yellow. And it was a lot of fun. Um, now, sunflowers, if you look at that, you're like, wow, that is a big, big flower. Well, it's not. I mean, sure, it's big, relatively speaking, but it's not one big flower. It's actually a series of flowers that makes up this sunflower. When you look closely at a sunflower, each one of those little things inside of it is its own flower. So the sunflower is made up of many, many, many tiny little flowers that are inside of this bigger um, container for the flower. Um, and likewise, you see a lot of seeds coming out of there. One big sunflower can yield many, many, many seeds. Um, and why does it do that? Well, it wants those seeds to make it to the ground. It wants those seeds to get planted in the ground. It wants those seeds to come on up and make more sunflowers. Um, dandelions have a little bit of a different um, method of reproducing. Their method is actually pretty cool. You've seen and probably done this yourself. You, when the dandelion goes to seed and you pick that um, that uh, stem, and then at the very top, it's got this thing that you can blow on. You know, and it's just, it's a lot of fun to blow on that thing. It's kind of like a old school bubble wand before they invented bubble wands that you could blow these bubbles and stuff. You could just pick dandelions and blow those things and they soar across the sky and, and those are all seeds wherever they land that it's, it's going to um, take root and try to um, grow new dandelions and dandelions are really good at that they they come up time and time again um, much to the upset of some people who really don't like dandelions in their yard now dandelions are edible um, the roots the stem the leaves uh, are particularly nutritious and even the um, flowers can be eaten as well. It's an edible flower. All, all parts of the dandelion are edible. Um, so why is it a weed? Why do people dislike it? I don't know. I think it's beautiful. I don't really think of it as a weed or a pest. Um, lastly, I just wanted to chat real quick about the rose family because the rose family is um, kind of strange only in that we don't really understand it all that much. We just think of the rose as this, this flower. Uh, we probably, at this point in your life, know the difference between a wild rose that has this just amazing fragrant smell to it. Even if you don't like the smell, you can at least note that it's a very strong smell to a wild rose. 
um, versus these cultured roses that people have grown that you um, find in shops. Um, sometimes don't even have um, stems on them. Uh, uh, sorry, sometimes they don't have um, the thorns, what we think of as the thorns, which I will tell you on Friday are not actually thorns. Uh, I'll tell you today. So the thing on a rose is not actually a true thorn because it's not a woody thorn that's set into the stem. You can actually pick it off fairly easily. Same as a blackberry brush. When you, uh, when you see those, those thorns on the blackberries, they're not actually thorns um, because a true thorn is this woody thorn that is stuck into the stem um, attached to it. So next time you see a rose and you want to just pop off the thorn, just... Uh, flick it sideways or even just hold on to it and twist it sideways and it'll come right off. Um, that's botanically called a prickle and not a thorn. So you can say this is a prickle and not a thorn. Uh, and people might not even believe you. <laughs> anyway, um, the things that roses can do, they, they actually produce a fruit. You know, we tend to think of roses just as a flower, um, but roses produce this fruit. Um, and it's called a rose hip. And you may have seen these in the wild. You can eat rose hips. Um, when I was a kid, we had a big thing of uh, rose hip vitamin C. It was these chewable vitamin C's, kind of tart, pretty sour. Um, it's very nutritious. If in the wild you need to um, get some vitamins in you, if you see a rose bush uh, and you see um, like just sort of a, it's almost like a sphere that has a little cone attached to it at the end, like a basically a picturesque sort of a bud looking thing uh, there's a whole bunch of seeds inside of it um, and this is this is actually a fruit this is a rose hip um, super high in vitamin C and the rose family actually includes a lot of things that you wouldn't uh, expect to be a rose um, it includes things like almonds um, which aren't even nuts I'll get into that on on Friday, but um, yeah, these are ac that's actually a fruit seed is the almond, and not necessarily a nut. It's not in the nut family. Um, prunes are also a type of rose. Um, apricots, cherries, nectarines, and peaches. Which the only difference between nectarines and peaches is that peaches have little fuzz and nectarines do not. Um, but again, both part of the rose family and plums. And if you like. Uh, uh, prunes. Prunes are made from plums. In some places, they just call plums prunes. Um, so that can be confusing if you go over to Europe, where they don't really have that difference that the prune is like the dried fruit, which is the plum. Um, anyway, those are all roses. So next time you eat those, you can say, hey, guess what? We're eating members of the rose family. Um, with that, I hope you have a really amazing and wonderful sunny day. And enjoy yourself. And I will see you all back here tomorrow.